Kirchhoff's laws. I know that many of the board boards, like say CBSC is there, ICC is there, and so many other state boards are there. They have a differentiation of or variety of the syllabi. So many times some boards have some advanced type of studies included, already included, like Kirchhoff's laws. Whereas in Maharashtra board, they have included some part of electrical engineering or electricity studies, but that's why the University of Pune has decided that as the main students come from all the corners of the country, then we should include all these theorems and laws into our first year syllabus. So Kirchhoff's law is already there. Many of you have already studied it, but we will again start discussing about it. Now see, Kirchhoff's laws are supposed to be the most important sets of the laws. Whatever are used, whatever laws are used in the electrical engineering, there are two laws. First thing that while mentioning the name, because Kirchhoff is a proper noun, it is the name of a person. What is the spelling? From there itself, you should not make any mistake. So K I R C H H or H. Double H, O, double H. So H and F will be double. So don't make any mistake while mentioning the name of the say inventor or the suggester of the law. Okay, so Kirchhoff's laws. There are two laws that we have suggested. Now what is the use of this law? The use of this law is whenever such type of electrical circuits will swarm, you know why the circuits are created first that all the electrical devices or circuits that we are using in day-to-day -day life or in industries, all these circuits can be represented by either resistances, inductances, capacitances, voltage sources, current sources and so many other like parameters like that. So finally, when we study the electrical properties of any circuit or behavior of any given circuit, then we must first represent it with the help of such a circuit. So once we are facing all the circuits, then second thing that we must be able to find out certain things that we want. For example, what is the use of these laws? Somebody may ask, now such a circuit is given, somebody may ask, I want under these situations that these three batteries are connected in certain fashion, 20 volt battery like this, 8 volt battery here, 4 volt battery and so many resistances connected in certain fashion. Remember? If batteries are not there and if it is just an interconnection of various components, it is called as a network. And when batteries are involved, either it can be a voltage source or a current source, then the circuit becomes live. Now, means that network becomes live, so it is called as a circuit. So there is a fundamental difference. Okay, but many times we also forget mentioning whether network or circuit. Okay, so network is basically inactive part of the circuit or just a simple network. Circuit is actually carrying certain currents, having certain potential differences, means it becomes life. Okay. Now under this situation, suppose I ask you, I want under this situation what would be the current flowing through this eight ohm resistor. Then blindly we cannot just uh, tell while looking at the circuit that this, this current will flow. For that we have to perform certain mathematical operations or certain say things we have to adopt so that we can solve the circuit for this answer or for this solution. Now see that can be one more type of question. Another thing I may ask you, I want the power consumed by this 4 ohm resistor. Okay, you know that it is a similar question because what was my first question? What is the current going through 8 ohm resistor? Now same thing I can ask for this. What would be the current flowing through 4 ohm resistor? Once I know current, I know that power is I square into R. So that is just one more simple calculation I did. That means you can find the current in any branch or component. You can find powers in any branch or component. You can find potential differences between any two given points. That means you can solve any type of such problem if we know certain laws. Now this is not the only are not the only laws, this will give you solutions of such problems. In our syllabus, we have Kirchhoff's laws to solve such problems. Also, we have other theorems like superposition theorem, 
we have the Thevenin's theorem and certain other theorems like Norton theorem and all that. But this would be the beginning, good beginning of studying the other theorems. Because Kirchhoff's laws tell us how to distribute the current, how to implement the laws into the circuits and all that. All other theorems would obviously require the knowledge of the Kirchhoff's laws regarding the distribution of currents and writing the equations. So it is always better to study Kirchhoff's laws first and then move to the other types of theorems. Now Kirchhoff has suggested two laws. You also might be knowing the names of the laws. What are those laws? Okay, 
and water is coming like this it is obvious that some water will flow through this pipe in this direction and some would flow in this direction so this is actually a node in the given circuit okay if it is a straight wire straight pipe line then there is no question of any bifurcation of the water okay any distribution redistribution of the water so in this you have to consider these circuits or this type of current flow just for the whole understanding with the help of such a water pipelines okay so we have identified that b c f and g are only the nodes now kirchhoff's first law says that at any junction or node at any junction or node the sum of all incoming currents must be equal to sum of all outgoing currents here it is said that once we make this statement here it is also said that kirchhoff's first law a current law is based on law of conservation of electric charges because when you say total incoming current must be equal to total outgoing current current is what current is just the flow of charges that means no charge is stored or no charge is remains uh, here throughout when the current is flowing that means there is no source or no sink at this particular point for the charges okay Something is incoming at exactly equal amount is outgoing. Nothing is stored at this point. So sometimes it is said. Okay. So first law says that at any junction or a node in any given circuit, such circuit, the sum of all incoming currents must be equal to sum of all outgoing currents. For observing that, you have to stand at any node and see what happens at this node. So what current is coming? Then how much it should be outgoing and all that. However, you will find that how much current. Suppose some current is flowing here. Now, how much current to be carried by this branch, and how much current to be carried by this branch? It is not decided by you and me. It is all decided by all the other circuit conditions. So all other circuit parameters finally decide what must be the final current distribution in the given circuit. It all depends on these resistance values as well as these source values and all that. Now it is not always that the sources will be only voltage sources. Sources will can also be current sources in these circuits. Okay. So remember, before applying Kirchhoff's laws, certain things must be known. Certain things must be known. What information or what knowledge you should have before you are well prepared for using Kirchhoff's laws? First thing you must have. Proper knowledge of series parallel combination of resistances. Second thing, you must have proper knowledge of star delta conversions because you will find in much more complicated circuits. Now this is simpler ones. Sometimes you have to reduce the circuit by network reduction techniques like star delta and this series parallel. So that knowledge also you should have. Okay, and also you should have simultaneously the knowledge of various types of sources and the source conversion i have told you earlier how the sources are represented or how the conversion is made remember if it is a, an ideal dc source it is just shown by simple symbol like this this is the positive plate or positive terminal this is the negative terminal and the emf value is always written near the source like something v 10 volt 5 volt whatever This is called as the ideal voltage source. But remember, no source is ideal in practice. No source is ideal in practice. Every voltage source will have some or the other value of internal resistance. Okay. So the source finally, practically, becomes like this. Its value to be shown like this, and one resistance in series. So this is the circuit for a practical source. So whatever is the internal resistance, we have to show by a resistance symbol. So here this way you may call as R I whatever, and this may be again the E M L O. So ideal, practical. Similarly, what is the current source? Current source, DC source, is shown like this. You have to show a circle, then some arrow like this, which shows the direction of current. Because direction is must here also. Positive, negative, you are mentioning, and some value of current. 5 ampere, 10 ampere. That is the source value. But ideal current source would be what? It would be this current source, and 
which should be connected in parallel with its internal resistance. Okay. So this would be some value. Okay. Now remember, you can convert such type of practical source into practical voltage source into practical current source. A simple example we will take. Okay, we are just uh, shifting from the Kirchhoff's laws, but this is this must be known before we apply. Every time your circuit will not be so much similar. They may use one more voltage source here, one current source here, some combination. So you must be able to convert the sources. For example, if I have a battery. Like this, DC battery of say 8 volt and its internal resistance is say 2 ohm. I want this to be converted into equivalent current source. What should be done? See, your RI is 2 and the voltage is 8. A simple thing, very simple thing. Voltage divided by resistance is correct as per Ohm's law. So, 8 by 2 is what? 4. So you will now represent the equivalent current source as this one. Here you will write what? 4 ampere. How you calculate this? 8 divided by 2 is 4 ampere. But you know that for a current source, the resistance should be shown across in parallel. So what would be the resistance to be shown across? The same value. Remember that value you have not to change. 2 ohm as it is. And this will be your output terminals of the source. Okay? So this voltage source, along with its internal resistance, can be represented by equivalent current source along with the parallel resistance like this. Okay? Shunt resistance like this. And vice versa. Suppose we have such a current source, parallel current source, any value. Suppose I change the values. I write this is a 10 ampere. And this is say 2 ohm. I want to convert this type of current source into equivalent voltage source. What would be the case? Now, current into resistance is voltage. So 10 twos are 20. So I will write here 20 volt. And same 2 ohm resistance in series. This you have not to change. Okay. So this is equivalent to this or this is equivalent to this. Okay. So all this knowledge we must have before we start using the Kirchhoff's law. Now see, first law we have mentioned that at any junction or node, the algebraic sum of all incoming currents must be equal to algebraic sum of all outgoing currents. Let us use this law and distribute the current. So first law is useful for distribution of imaginary currents with our own will, but with certain rules, remember. From any point you can start. Suppose we start from some point A. We have to go and imagine the things now. So I suppose write here, some current I hold. And I myself is considering that this direction is this. I don't know, finally, what would be the current flowing in this branch? And also what would be its direction, whether same or opposite. So initially you start with your own assumptions. Okay. And from any point you start, somebody may start from here like this. So there are no rules for that. You can start from any point, any corner, any, anywhere in the circuit, from any branch. So suppose I consider that current I O is flowing. Can you please close the door? Okay, this is the current I O. Now you travel along with the current. Okay, you just travel. From up to what point it will go now? So it will reach B. Now remember, it is not that a man is walking and current is flowing like that. You will find that currents are set up almost, not exactly instantaneously, but almost instantaneously. Okay. So current will reach, it is just for the purpose of explanation that I am saying, now current will reach here. It is not that. Everything will be set up almost at the same time. Okay. Now it will reach to point B. What will happen here? What is obvious to happen? It has to pass now. Some current may flow through this, some other current will flow through this. But whether, now both will go away, obviously, because I see it is as if the water is coming and it has two water pipes. So some water will flow through this, some will flow through this. 
Now we have to only say that. Now out of the two unknown, what you can imagine? Okay. So suppose I say that current flowing here downwards is I two. Okay. Now what will be the current? Now don't say I three, yeah. Because I think we have to in the relay then finally. Because once two things are two atoms are specified. Then third you can just represent in terms of the first two. Okay, so I one current was coming. You have imagined that in this branch, Coulomb branch, I two flows. So what would be the remaining current? I one. So here I should write that current flowing through this is I one minus I two. Now it will reach up to point C. Now again here you apply the Kirchhoff law here. You stand here. What are the incoming currents? You look at all the three waves, na? You are standing. What is incoming for you? I one. I one is only incoming. What is outgoing? I one. I one is outgoing. You all add all the outgoing. I one. I one plus I one minus I two is I one. So outgoing was also I one, and incoming is also I one. Just this way, you have to distribute it. That means obviously we are using the Kirchhoff's first law. Now you reach up to C. Again, you have two water waves or two paths. Sorry, correct. Again, there is a need of assuming one current, one more current. Okay. Suppose I assume here I three. It is not that always you assume this I three. You may say this is I three. Anything. Okay. Now once this is I one minus I two, and I three further goes down, what would be the remaining current going here? I will show it here. So out of I one minus I two. I three is also subtracted. Okay, I three also gone. So I one minus I two minus I three. Okay. And then you stand here. What is the incoming current? I one minus. What is outgoing? This two are outgoing. You add all the outgoing. You will find that it is the same incoming. Now this entire I one current, I one minus I two minus I three, flows through this battery and reaches up to node F. Now what happens up to node at node F? That is important. See, this current is coming like this. Its direction we have already specified. Okay. And this current is also coming. This direction is also defined now. So henceforth, don't distribute it here now, because this is already defined. I three. So here you will find if you stand at node F, you will find that what is incoming? I three is incoming. And this is also incoming. I one minus I two minus I three. So what should be outgoing? I one minus I two. I three I three will be cancelled. So I one minus I two. And what should be its direction? Away from F. So here the current would be I one minus I two. Now remember here in Kirchhoff's laws, you forget about this battery and their polarities. Current can flow through battery in opposite direction also, or Battery can send also the current. Here you will find that if your direction finally remains true, here that means this battery is being charged. Remember, suppose finally you find that this direction was true, whatever you had assumed in the circuit, then this battery is charged. Whereas what will happen for this battery? Its current is like this now, and suppose it is true finally, that means this battery is being discharged. Because see, whenever a battery gives the current in its normal Direction positive to negative in the external circuit. Then the battery is discharging. It is giving you power, giving you energy. But if you are forcing the current in a battery in opposite direction, this current should flow through positive plate inside the battery. In a, as per opposite polarities, then the battery is being charged. That is what. That is why we are charging the batteries now after the use. You are using their energy. They get discharged, and while charging, what you are doing? You are applying the voltage in opposite direction. Positive terminal of the external source to its positive, negative to its negative. Means you are forcing the current to flow through the battery in its opposite direction. That is natural tendency of sending the current. Okay. So you forget about what are the polarities. So first law just allows you to distribute the currents. Irrespective of all these polarities of the sources, we have not taken any any collisions of that. Okay. 
Now this I1 minus I2 is coming. You are standing now at node G. What is incoming? I1 minus I2. Here, what is incoming? This is also fixed now. Okay. So I2 is incoming. I1 minus I2 is incoming. They will add. What is the addition? I1. So I1 goes like this. And you will finally find once your current distribution is over, this should match here. That means then only your current distribution is right. Otherwise, if you find that when you come back to the original point, that your these values or these um, say denominations are totally different. Here you started from I1, you must have the same value coming back. Okay. Now the current distribution is proper. Now this is the use of first law. Now what is the second law? Second law speaks about the closed loops or meshes in the network or circuit. Okay. Now what is a closed loop? Closed loop means any closed path. Now can you tell me what are the closed paths? See, this is one of the closed paths. So how to define it while writing A, B, G, H and I will say A. So that it closes the path. A, B, G, H, A. Any other closed path? So for a battery, 
jumping from negative to positive will increase the voltage or jumping from positive to negative this direction will drop the voltage so kirchhoff has said that in any closed loop in such a circuit the sum of all the potential rises must be equal to sum of all the potential drops what must be the uh, philosophy behind this it is just the law of nature you know that for any such closed circuit if you start traveling from any point and when you you have some voltage some potential v and you traverse the loop and come back again to same point what must be your potential again when you are coming to the same point in the circuit your potential must be same means the differences must cancel each other are you are here suppose your potential is 2 volt now you walk along okay many times your potential will increase drop according to the situation but finally when you come to the same point what what must happen to your own potential it must remain same no? in any electrical network in any electrical system if you are at one, you are coming at one and the same location in any field electric field your potential again must be same provided all other conditions are constant okay all other conditions are constant here the sources have their fixed voltage and resistances have their fixed values currents whatever are flowing are fixed in such a circuit okay so this is only the basis so as your potential is bound to be same but it is not bound to be same when you are traveling suppose you are here you are traveling you are here now you jump maybe your potential will rise or drop according to all those laws then you are coming to b you are traveling b to g you are again jumping some resistance because you want to reach traverse the entire room again depending on those rules your potential may rise or drop by some amount so your potential by traversing the loop may rise may drop according to the situations but finally when you reach to the same point obviously your potential it is purely logical that your potential must be same when you reach at the same point that is the basis of kirchhoff's second law it says that whenever you are traversing any loop or in any closed loop the sum of all potential rises must be same as sum of all potential drops okay so that is some uh, what you call equilibrium type of situation for any loop okay so now what is done after this first law we had applied now we have to use the second law see how to do the use how to make the use of second law. how many now our final job is what we want to find out current in the dome resistor what is the current as specified by you i am not i am not that thing now you can distribute current any way remember if you solve this problem anybody has a choice to start from anywhere while distributing the currents to select the currents any value of current in any branch provided you are obeying first law okay you coming and out going all that so it is not that every time this would be the current distribution for everybody because suppose i would have for this i1 minus i2 if i would have considered i3 here that i1 minus i2 minus i3 would be here so your current distributions can be different so here you, you cannot see each other's node books and see my current distribution is wrong or right it is your own current distribution you go accordingly whatever you have you have with that you have to go okay now the use of second law now see our job is to find this current i1 minus i2 minus i3 that means i must have the values of all these three values uh, values of these three currents i1 is what ampere i2 is what ampere i3 is what ampere okay so three variables three variables we have how many equations we need for solving three variables three equations we need but kirchhoff has said every loop is bound to create one equation okay you can write that voltage drop voltage rise equation for each and every loop how many loops we had loops you had identified six this is that means you can write six equations but is there any need of writing six equations no you need only three equations okay now it is your choice which three loops you consider again here it is a variety so 
It is not that any two students can have the same thing done on the paper. Okay. Because somebody may select this, this and this. Three individual rows. Somebody may select one, then this second and the whole group as the third one. So your equations are bound to be different. What must be the same? Final answer must be same. Okay. So you have six loops identified. You have only three variables. You need only three loop equations. Okay. Now remember the most important point. Where we go wrong? Since you have almost double number of loops available. Suppose I take loop this one. First one this A B G H A. Second loop I will take this B C F G B. And third loop I take. A B C F G H A. Your answer may go wrong. Why? Because you had not considered this particular branch. So remember, when you consider the loops, you have to ensure that at least each branch must be at least covered at least once, somewhere in some loop. You have not to keep or leave any branch uncovered in your any of your equations. Remember your answer may go wrong, you solve it, you will find it. Even if it is your choice to have any three loops, because you have many loops available for writing the equations. But if you say leave any such branch uncovered, you may get wrong answer. Okay. So let us have a practice of getting suppose we want three now. So we just take this three small loops. Okay, first one. Then this has second one. This has third one. Small, small loop. It is also called as a mesh. This is one mesh, small mesh, small mesh. Okay, also loop. Normally what is done? Loop can be anything like this. This entire thing. But mesh means you cannot further uh, uh, this. What? Represent it. Means it is the smallest loop in your circuit. So this is the small x. It does not have any subpart. Whereas if you take this loop, it has two small meshes, this one and this one. Okay. So let us have a practice. But it is not any rule, I remember. You can take any three. Only thing you have to maintain that you have to cover all three branches. At least once. Somewhere it must be covered, at least once. But that thing is always gone if you select such small small meshes. Because this will cover this part. This Middle one will cover this part, although this will cover double, it is okay. You can have, it can be covered many times. Okay. And this will cover again the remaining part. Maybe it is covered double, let it be. But nothing is remain un unconsidered. Okay? So we call this loop as loop 1. We call this as loop 2. You may or may not give these names. Because you can identify the loops with these names also. A, B, G, H, A. So either say loop 1 or I will say loop A, B, G, H, A. And this will be called as loop 3. And your next job is now to implement Kirchhoff's second law. What is second law? First of all, total drops and total variables. So I will just find it here. <coughs> For loop 1. You have to just write one equation now. For loop 1. Probably loop 1 is this. Anywhere you start. Suppose you start from A. Now see, you have to assume you are walking, huh? you are walking on this road. Okay. Now your direction can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Any direction you take. That is your choice. Again. Again here also, you have also both the choices. Suppose we consider we are traveling or walking in clockwise direction. So I am here now. Okay. I am walking like this. Now when I walk here, I come across a resistance. I have to cross it. Now what is the current direction? It is like this. Now my direction of walking is same as the direction of current. So voltage will drop. drop. By what amount it will drop? Current into resistance is a voltage. Current is I1. Voltage is the resistance is 2, 2 ohm. So what is the voltage drop? 2 times I. So I will write it. So minus 2 times one minus sign because it is a draw. Now we have reached up to point B. Now your job is to be to G. Right. 
you are come come ahead and you are again you come across this one more resistance here also the current direction is downwards you are also coming downwards same direction so voltage is again what amount 4.5 but you have to write it as minus 4.5 so minus 4.5 Now we have reached up to point G. G to H. There is no component, no voltage source, no resistance. So nothing is there. So you have reached H because this potential and this potential is same because it is one and the same point. No component, no voltage source, nothing. Now H to A. There is no resistance, but there is a battery. And for battery, what I have told you, irrespective of direction of current. You are reaching here. You are jumping from negative to positive. So you are jumping from lower potential to higher potential. This voltage will rise. So by what amount it will rise? It will rise in its value because it is itself in volts. So no question of taking any product from here. So you will write this as plus twenty. So plus twenty. And now you have reached to your original point. All these rises and drops. You have already mentioned with positive and negative signs. So our entire sum total should be what? It should be zero. Because Now we have reached to original point. 
and this all will be zero. Now next thing is very simple, just a simple mathematical calculation solving these simultaneous equations. Your calculators also have the solutions for direct solutions for that. Only you have to now expand the things, write the three equations in terms of I1, I2, I3 and all that. You can solve them by determinant or matrix, matrix methods. Okay. Even you can have direct solutions. So find out. Now once you will find out the values of I1, I2, I3. Final thing, what, what do you want finally? Our question was, what will be the current flowing through k ohm resistance? You have to solve these three equations. Solve the values of I1, I2, I3. And finally, once you get the value, what is the current in this A ohm resistor? I1 minus I2 minus I3. Remember, you may get some current as minus negative. It means that whatever direction you had considered in your other circuit, it must be That is the only significance. But finally, suppose you get, as an example, suppose you get I1 as a 1 ampere, I2 as minus 2 ampere and I3 as minus 4 ampere. What would be your answer for this current? See, you have to take this now. I1 minus I2 minus I3. I1, 1. Minus I2. Same value you put up, whatever you have got. Minus 2. Don't change it. And minus I3. So, minus 2. So, in that case, you will get 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 4, 7. So you have not to change the size of this particular size. So you can solve it. Okay. You take down only these equations. Okay. Immediately. Take down these equations and show me the final answer. Okay. Simplify as uh, I1. If I divide suppose by minus, plus 2 I2.
solving these simultaneous equations by just putting the matrix values or determinant values. The simplest thing is what express one of the parameters in terms of r. I will be having k minus two i two. Put i one and you put this two. So that means you will be able to do i two and i three. Again, we will reduce one variable. That is your choice, sir. In examination, nobody will ask you to solve or expect that you should solve this simultaneous equation by this and this particular method. It is your choice. Use of mathematics, you can do that on your own. Okay. So finally, what we want is the values for I one, I two, and I three. You will find that not only you can find current in A because they have asked only this one. You can find current in any resistances because now you know the values of I1, I2, and I3. So suppose you can find in this two, it is I1. That means simplifying the network with the help of Kirchhoff's laws gives you currents in all branches and all components. And obviously the power calculations, I square R. Whereas in Thevenin's and other theorems, specifically you find only the currents or powers in a given resistor, not all. Whereas Kirchhoff law can give you the currents, powers and all such information in all the branches, all the components. Fast, fast, fast. So, Upon solving or after solving those three equations, finally we arrive at these answers. Okay. So current I1 value that we get is 144 by 37 ampere. I2 value we get 113 divided by 37. And I3 value we get 16 by 37. Now let these values be plus or minus, positive or negative. You just maintain them right now as you have obtained them, plus or minus. Not No need to change it. And therefore now, what was our problem statement? Our problem statement was to find the current in this 8 ohm resistor. And as per our current distribution, the current in the 8 ohm resistor is I1 minus I2 minus I3. So here, I have written the final answer that the current flowing through 8 ohm resistor will be I1 minus I2 minus I3. We have just substituted the three values. We have to substitute these values with their own signs, whatever we are getting after solving the equations. Suppose a value can be negative, you substitute that negative value, whatever. Now here we have got all these values as plus, let it be. So we have substituted the value in the equation and finally our answer for the given problem is the current in 8 ohm resistor is 15 by 37 ampere. And now see, with Kirchhoff's laws, we can find current in any branch not only current in this atom resistor because basically we have solved the equations and we have found out the values of various current variables. For example, in this branch, as per our current distribution, it is current I1. I1 value we have got as 144 by 37 and we got a plus value. That means we, there is no need to change the direction of this current. Suppose if this value would have been negative, then we, sh we should have shown the direction of current I1 opposite. But as this value is 144 by 37 and it is plus, we just maintain this direction. So I request you all to look at the figure on the right side of the board. So this figure. Here I have shown the current 144 by 37 because it was I1. So we have done that. Second, in this branch, current is I2. I2 we have got as 113.37. So let us move to this circuit. Here I have written 113 by 37. Again, since the value was plus, no need to change the direction here. Then in this branch, the current is I1 minus I2. So first, we have to calculate I1 minus I2 with the values obtained. So I1 is 144 by 37. I2 is 113 by 37. You will find that the subtraction I1 minus I2 is still a positive answer. And that answer is that we get as 31 by 37. So this is I1 minus I2. Again, since I1 minus I2 is appearing as plus or positive difference, we need, do not need to change this direction of I1 minus I2. So it is this current here. 
I1 minus I2 was coming still positive, so same direction we have maintained. Then in this branch, the current is I3 in this 2 ohm resistor. I3 we have got plus value. So again same direction we maintain. So top to bottom 16 by 37. And in the last branch there, the current is I1 minus I2 minus I3, which you have calculated. Again it comes positive. So again there is no need to change the direction. Now you will find that at any node or everywhere, the Kirchhoff's first law will be, say that will be valid there. We will just check with the values. Out of 144 by 37, 113 by 37 comes down. So the difference is 31 by 37. That goes ahead. Then this 31 by 37, out of that, 16 by 37 comes down and 15 by 37 goes ahead. See again, both these outgoing currents, their addition must be equal to 31 by 37. Again, this 15 by 37 will come here. 16 by 37 comes from top. They will add and again this total 31 by 37 will go ahead. And here, this 113 by 37, this 31 by 37 they will add and 144 by 37 will go ahead and see here the values match here. So this is the overall procedure by which we can solve any such given circuit for finding out various branch currents. Okay. So we have solved the problem now for our for getting our required answer that current in a ohm resistor. But also I have told you other conclusions also we can draw with the same results. One more thing to add, maybe the question is like this. Also tell whether this battery 8 volt or 4 volt batteries or all the three batteries are charging or discharging. Now see when the battery is charging, when we send the current through its positive plate inside means when we send a current forcibly in its opposite direction of the natural direction of its current. Normally a battery when it gives us power or energy, it sends a current from positive plate, it will flow through external circuit or load and it will come back to negative terminal. But forcibly if we send a current with the help of some other voltage source or battery inside the battery against its natural direction, then we say that battery is charged. And when the battery is giving us current in the external circuit from positive plate to negative plate, then we say that battery is discharged. Battery is discharged means it is giving us energy and battery is charged means we are giving energy to it from some other source. Okay, so let us just check it now regarding this type of answers. For this 20 volt battery, see now current is like this. Okay, so current is coming out from positive plate. So battery is being discharged means giving the energy. So that conclusion we can find out. Secondly, for this battery, now for this 8 volt battery, the current is in opposite direction, means it is moving inside positive plate, inside the battery. That means this battery is being charged. And for this battery, current is coming like this. You will find that it is coming out from the positive plate. So this battery is also giving energy, means it is being discharged. So 20 volt battery and 4 volt battery, as both these batteries are giving out the current in natural direction, they are giving us energy, that means they are discharged. They are discharging now. Whereas 8 volt battery is forcibly being charged by the circuit conditions. So this is the use of the Kirchhoff's law. You will find that when we study various other types of theorems like superposition theorem, Norton theorem, Th uh, Thevenin's theorem and many such theorems are there. This is the basic current distribution using Kirchhoff's first law. Then writing the equations using Kirchhoff's second law. All this knowledge is needed when we study the other types of theorems. Okay? So we can say that the Kirchhoff's laws are very fundamental laws and they, these laws must be studied very properly before we go for some other types of theorems. So I think the procedure has been explained how to solve the problems by using Kirchhoff's law and that will be definitely helpful to all the viewers to tackle the other problems with some different types of theorems. So we stop here and I thank you all for attending this lecture. Thank you.